Bicycle derailleur gears were first seen in 1905 on a French two-speed setup. 115 years later though, we're still using the chain, the cassette and the derailleur because they're the most efficient way of having multiple gears on a bike. Early designs though were quite crude and modern day transmissions are very different. They're lightning fast, they're very, very smooth and they're very efficient. How do they work though? Let's have a closer look, shall we? To make this video, Shimano has sent me a 12-speed transmission. It's a one-by system as well, uh, which actually you could credit one-by with giving frame designers more freedom. Uh, and essentially, it's probably the best way of having gearing on a mountain bike. It's an easy way of having a huge range of gears on an off-road bike with none of the limitations that you could get with a double or even a triple setup. The reason for that, Basically is the fact that on a triple setup, you'd find the main pivot could be off skew, could be asymmetrical, and you're trying to cram in all those chain rings to get optimum chain line, depending on which gear you're having at the back. And of course, you've got to get front derailleur in there as well. The one by system is where mountain biking is at right now. So first up, let's look at the chain. We're gonna work our way around the transmission and show you what everything does so you can get your heads around it. Quite simple really actually, but it's very clever what they do. So modern day chain, this is a 12 speed Shimano XT chain. And what you're looking at in the chain is you have these outer plates, you have these inner plates, you have the rollers, and you have the pins that go through them. Uh, that is why when you lubricate your chain, you have to leave, leave it enough time for the lubricant to actually get inside the rollers to make sure the rollers can move around those pins. That is what needs lubricated, not the entire outside of those chain links. Now, most chains will have the same inside spacing. It's the outside spacing that actually changes across chains. We're talking eight speed, nine speed, 10 speed, 11 speed, and now 12 speed. And this is the reason you can't just put any old chain on any chain of cassette. They really are quite specific, although there are some patterns, 10, 11 are kind of compatible. 12 speed though, you do have to use 12 speed with 12 speed. And the reason for that is there's a lot of special features built into these chains. Okay, so we're going in closer now, and what you might see if you look very close is the inner plates here protrude a little bit more than the outer plates. This is a design exclusive to Hyperglide Plus. This is what you see on Shimano's 12 speed setup. And the reason for this is it has better contact with the chain ring. Now, minimizing friction is a bit of a strange thing. It might not work the way you think it does. By having more contact with the chain ring, you're actually reducing friction. You're reducing any movement, any rumbling around, anything like that, that all translates to being increasing friction. So this reduces that by having a better holding pattern, basically, to keep it in place on a very specific chain ring design. You also might notice on the outer plates here, they've got chamfered edges here. That is because the chain has to obviously stretch as it's moving through the range of gears. And by instead of having a square edge on the edge of these, by having a chamfered edge, it just means it's that bit quieter. And in fact, you'll find a 12 speed setup will be much quieter than its 11 speed counterpart. If you take a closer look at the inside here, you'll see that these bits are also chamfered almost to a degree that it feels flat on the outside and it chamfers in. So it's actually quite a defined, it's almost a sharp edge there. And the reason for that is there are special teeth on the cassette, which we're gonna show you. And they basically hook the chain up onto the next pocket and pull it back down again. It's a very specific system. In the old days, to join a chain or to break a chain, you would use the pins, you'd push those out. These days, you have a specific quick link. It's a very good system, they're very strong, and they're also very convenient to carry spares with you out on the trail as well. In the event, if you break in the chain, let's say you tear your derailleur off and everything gets chewed up, uh, that's what you would need to rejoin your chain. Super easy to use and really safe as well. Working directly in conjunction with that Hyperglide Plus chain, the very specific Dynamic Chain Engagement Plus chain rings. Bit of a mouthful, I know, but it's very specific because of the technology involved. Now, if you look at the profile of the teeth involved here, you'll see there's some slightly taller ones, and you'll see also some are narrower than others. 
Reason for that is they fill the void in between the chain. So you're looking at the male and female chain links essentially there. You notice that the, the bigger chaining teeth actually fill out the bigger void there. The reason for that is it's about reducing friction, it's about removing the chance that the chain can move around. If the chain can move around on that chain ring, there's a good chance it can come off. Not only is it more efficient, it's quieter, it's going to last longer, and the chances of having your chain actually come off while you're riding is very minimal. So minimal, in fact, that many riders don't even use chain guides anymore. Next up, let's look at the cassette. Now, this really is the standout item when you're talking about a 12-speed transmission. When I first started mountain biking, I was using a five-speed block on the back. Now we're up to 12-speed here. It's got a tiny little 10 tooth on the bottom, a massive 51. Like, that is absolutely enormous. The range of gears you have for this with just a single chain ring is far greater than anything I ever grew up having. It's absolutely amazing, the technology you have today. And given that this is a consumable item, the work that's gone into this is incredible. It's really intricate. You've got this spider beam design on the back here, uh, and, and the, basically the rings are all sort of riveted together, and it's a dual material as well. So you'll notice that there's steel bottom half of the cassette and there's an aluminium top half. This is to save weight, but also bearing in mind that aluminium does wear out faster than steel, but you don't use those gears all the time, so you may as well chop some of that weight off. The daily driver gears down the bottom here, they're all made of much harder wearing steel. Very smart design. This is where the magic happens, and this is where Shimano's Hyperglide Plus system stands out. Now, if you look closely, I mean really closely here, you can see that some of these teeth are very different in shape. Some are like a shark's tooth, some are flat, and if you look at them in line, you'll notice some angle out, some angle in. This is so they can hook the chain on. And you'll see these ramps and gates, so this area here is stepped back slightly from the rest of the sprocket. Now that, when you watch in slow motion, that is where the action happens, and it's only from here to here that the chain will jump up and it will jump down. It's immensely fast. In fact, it's so fast that you can actually keep pressure down the whole time when you're shifting on these Hyperglide Plus cassettes which to me seems a bit alien because of the fact I'm used to having to sort of ease up very slightly as you change gear so you don't crunch your way through the gears, but they really are. You can just crack through those gears, no problem, and just keep on mashing around the pedals. It's amazing technology, but the thing that's really stand out as well with Hyperglide Plus is not only does the chain pull itself all the way back up, but it does it the opposite way. Now, the reason that this is so impressive from my point of view is the rear derailleur is under tension when you're shifting into a bigger sprocket like this. And because it's under tension, it's gonna pull itself in quicker. When you release that tension on the shifter for it to jump back down again, traditionally there'd be a minute delay. I mean, we're talking a small amount here, not enough to really be an issue, unless there was any sort of drag in the system. But with Hyperglide Plus, the chain physically pulls itself back down again, just as fast as it shifts up. This is really impressive stuff because it means no matter what's going on anywhere else on the bike, you know that the chain, when you hit that shifter button, down through those gears. This is the rear derailleur. Now this really is kind of the hub of the system. This is where the action happens from. Now you need one of these in combination with the ramps you see on the rear sprockets and those chamfered edges that you see on the chain to get that really smooth shifting. Now essentially, all rear derailleurs have some kind of parallelogram designed to them. This enables them to move in and out. Of course, that is at a slight angle and it does differ on the different derailleurs available. They all have a number of different features on them. So they all have a sprung lower cage. This sprung lower cage that you see on them has two sets of wheels on them. Uh, sometimes known as pulley wheels, sometimes known as guide wheels, sometimes known as jockey wheels. There's various different names for them. These ones on the 12-speed are much bigger. They're 13 teeth, uh, bigger than the older varieties. That just means they're a bit smoother and they put those forces out there a bit more. The chain doesn't have to pass at such an acute angle, so therefore it just rolls a bit smoother. Um, keeping things smooth is the key to keeping things friction-free and reliable. Now, there is a difference between the one by setup rear derailleur you'd see and the one you'd see on a multiple chain ring option, and that is the pivot point here. So the upper wheel, on a multiple chainring setup would actually be here. On the bigger setup for the one by, which means you can use them with that huge 51 tooth, I have to stagger this slightly in order to cater for the range of gears. You gotta think that is a lot of chain you have to take up the slack for from 10 to 51. It's a huge amount. It's also why you see the cage is quite long. 
When changing gear into the lower gears, that is the bigger sprockets. It has to compensate for that. And to, to do that, it can move all the way forwards. But then when you change into the smaller sprockets, this is why you have these two sets of wheels. They roll all the way back to take up the slack in that transmission. Now there's various points of adjustment that all rear derailleurs have. They all have limit screws, high and low, and they all have a B screw, sometimes called the B tension. Now the B tension is just responsible for adjusting the height of that upper wheel in relation to the cassette itself, just to aid your smooth shifting. The more essential one are actually the limit screws. Now these adjust the position of these guide wheels in line with that cassette in the small position and in the large position. You only need to adjust these once when you set up your derailleur. One correlates to the lower position, one correlates to the higher position. You can actually see them doing their job here on the inner and outer plate. So you see here that the inner one is actually already on the plate and if I manipulate this, you'll see this one will hit in the outer position there. Well, why would you want a clutch on a derailleur like this to start with? Um, well, it's all about keeping equal chain tension. If you keep equal chain tension, i.e. the chain's not flapping around all over the place, the chain is gonna stay in place on those chain rings. And that, in combination with the dynamic chain engagement plus technology, means you're very, very unlikely to lose the chain. The clutch itself, though, is actually really cool. If I just reach over here and get an Allen key and I'll just take the cover off so you can see on the inside, you can actually adjust the tension of the clutch from the outside, but I'm gonna take the cover off so you can see here. Take this off, and you can see the clutch design itself. It's a roller clutch, it's a one-way system, kind of along the same lines as the Sprague clutch. And when you move the lever up, you can see it adjusts this cam right here and basically puts additional tension in place. Quite cool how it works. So if I undo it first, and then I move that lower cage, you'll see the one-way clutch moving, like so. And then if I engage the cam on there, I find it'll be very hard to move that. And you can increase that as well. And the whole point is, it keeps good chain tension on your transmission there. And basically means you're gonna be able to smash through those gears on rough terrain, you're not gonna lose your chain. Again, this is adjustable and this is something that you do need to put a bit of lube in from time to time just to make sure it's working as well as it should be. And why would you wanna turn the clutch off? Well, being able to turn the clutch off means it's gonna be easier for you to manipulate the lower part of the derailleur in order to remove your rear wheel from the bike. If you try and fight that with the clutch on, it's just gonna be hard work. So it's a really smart system to be able to turn it on and off as easy as that. The last thing you need to know is where the cable comes from. So the cable comes from the shifter, which we're about to take a look at, passes through the back of the derailleur into the stop here, and it runs around and is secured in place by that cable clamp. Securing the cable is obviously really important because it relies on the indexing of those gears. If there's too much cable tension, you're actually gonna be overshifting. If there's not enough cable tension, you're gonna be undershifting. Although it's not rocket science, it is important to get it set up right. And when set up right, they work like a dream. Now lastly, of course, is the shifter. So you're gonna need one of these in order to change gear. Now, way back in the day, there used to be thumb shifters on top of the bars, completely not ergonomic in any way at all. These days, they sit in a very natural position. You can downshift using your finger like a trigger, but you can also push it away from you as well. And you can upshift using your thumb on the paddle at the bottom. There's multiple shifts available to downshift. You shift two at a time, and you can dump through a few gears at a time on the way up. Now, something important to say, along with the, the various chains that you get on the market, 10, 11, 12, etc., you get the same with shifters and the cable pull is not always the same. And in fact, with the Shimano 12-speed setup, the cable pull actually differs as you're shifting. So it does mean that Shimano 12-speed off-road stuff isn't compatible with other stuff on the market. But I'll tell you what, it's kind of hard to see what's going on here. So I'm gonna actually take the cover off to show you. Ah, that's better. So I've taken off the housing here so you can actually see the inside. Now there's only really three main things you need to know about one of these shifters. So essentially it's just a ratchet and a spool system. Works one way and you have a release trigger. So as I move this, you can probably see on the inside here, it's moving that cable around, it's pulling it in. And the other way, when there's a bit of tension on it, you release it. Very simple, 
very effective. And to be honest, you rarely need to actually do anything to a shifter unless you're changing the cable. Although I do recommend from time to time making sure you put some water displacer through one of these because they can harbor, because of the shell on them, a bit of water on the inside. Now the one other thing you need to know is about the barrel adjuster. This is where you do the fine tuning of your gears and you can do this from the trail because it's at the handlebar end. Well, there we go. That's kind of the inner workings of a one by transmission. It's a deceptively simple setup and all that's required is to get it fit correctly, uh, set up the basically set up the stops on the derailleur, get the chain the correct length, and there you go. It's a very simple process. Uh, I'm amazed actually we're still using something similar 115 years later from when we first saw a derailleur. I mean, a derailleur is kind of king. Kind of love them. What do you guys think of derailleurs? Uh, I'd love to know, actually. Let us know in those comments. And there's going to be a few more videos floating around for you to see on setting up and indexing your gears. That's a bit more specific. This video is showing you a bit more about the inner workings and what it means when you look at those cassettes and you find yourself a bit puzzled maybe looking at those spiky teeth that are not so spiky when you actually think about what they do. Clever stuff, eh? See you later.